Alright, so uh, welcome back. The next question is about uh, materials and diversity of materials. We all know that we are surrounded with a wide range of materials and each of those materials contain uh, or, or has its own set of characteristics. And uh, But before we go on to this, uh, let's do some revision. As you know, these slides are all about re revising your P3 and P4 topics. So let's revise uh, what revision, uh, what uh, materials are all about, right? So we know that uh, there's a wide range of materials all around us, and then they can be classified in many ways. Uh, we have gone through this in the question before this video uh, that there is a uh, you can occupy, uh, sorry, you can classify, sorry, you can classify materials into how well they let light pass through. Uh, we know there's opaque, translucent and transparent materials and we've gone through this in greater detail in the video you watched last week. Uh, we also know that um, materials can also be classified into two groups, whether they are able to sink in water or whether they are able to float in water. We know that uh, these are some of the examples of materials that sink in water. Uh, metal coins, metal paper clip, basically uh, anything that's made up of only metal can uh, sink and normally do sink. Uh, rocks and pebbles, all right, uh, and glass, marbles, and there's a lot of other things that can um, sink in water, but I'm not going to list them all here because uh, there wouldn't be enough space. So basically, a lot of things. Uh, do sink in water. Uh, it's very easy to find out. Just take that object, you know, and put it in a basin of water and you can see whether it floats or whether it sinks. Now, objects that float in water are normally made out of wood, okay? Uh, some liquids float in water, like oil, all right? And many things made out of plastic uh, floats in water. Now, uh, things that are also filled with air also tend to float in water. So that explains why some of you ask me, Mr. Zaki, you say metal uh, floats in water, uh, metal sinks in water. I've seen ships and containers, you know, uh, in water that floats. But that's because uh, even though the ship is made up of metal, but uh, the ship is made in such a way that there's a lot of air trapped in between those metal all right and because it is filled with air it helps it to float uh, so you can imagine uh, the ship that you are talking about that some of you asked me uh, about right it is actually made out of sh uh, metal all around but it is actually hollow inside and inside it you can actually find lots of space where air can fill and that's why it floats. Similarly, uh, you know, if you can, uh, you can have a container made out of glass or made out of rock. And if there is a lot of air, you know, more air than glass and more air than rocks and pebbles inside that container, uh, you know, that thing can float too. All right. So, uh, air filled objects uh, allow things to float. All right. Uh, and so, you know, this is just a revision of how you can diversify, how can you can classify materials into things that sink in water and objects that float in water, okay? Uh, but if the objects are made up of just the material uh, and you discount the fact that the air is inside, then it is easier. So metal coin is just everything metal, it will sink. Rocks and pebbles are made up of entirely rocks and pebbles. There's no air in between, so it will sink. Same goes with glass. Uh, but if it is made of wood, you know, just solely wood, then it tends to float. You know, if it's just simple plastic with no uh, nothing else, then it will float. All right? Okay. We also know that we choose uh, the material to make any object. Uh, it depends on really what we want to use the object for. Alright, so uh, 
also note that you know when we when we use words like strength flexibility and waterproof it has a specific meaning in science so for example strength is how uh, you know the material is able to uh, carry uh, loads without breaking okay that's what we call that's what we mean by strength uh, flexibility is again uh, how well the material is able to bend without breaking okay so strength and flexibility has got uh, got to do with the amount of load and uh, you know without breaking uh, and uh, when we talk about waterproof uh, whether an object is waterproof or not it depends on whether that object is able to absorb water or the object is not able to absorb water so a piece of paper is not waterproof because it's able to absorb water uh, whereas uh, plastic is definitely waterproof because it does not allow any water to pass through it does not absorb any water okay now knowing that uh, all this having revised all this now at this point if you still uh, do not uh, uh, if, if I've gone too fast uh, in the explanation of this uh, themes and topics that we are revising uh, feel free to repeat the video uh, replay it pause it at uh, you know necessary uh, points in the video so that you can understand remember to listen actively all right uh, and if you have still have questions about them email me all right now let's go to the question now the diagram below shows a party tent party tents where guests can stay under hot under hot or rainy days and normally this is outside so under hot days it will uh, block the sunlight uh, so that people can be under it uh, comfortably under rainy days it will block the rain all right so it will not allow the guests and whatever is under the tent to be wet now linda carried out some tests to find out if the material is suitable for making the canopy of the tent so the canopy is the top part which shields the guest and everything under it from the hot light, uh, from the sunlight, and from the rain. So, test A: Does the material float or sink in water? Now, whether it this is sink, whether this material sink or float in water, do you think it's relevant for you to have a canopy in the field uh, or outdoors, and whether it sinks or float in water? Well, I, I don't think so. It is not necessary for the canopy to be subjected to this test, whether it floats or whether it sinks in water. Uh, let's look at test B. Is the material waterproof? Definitely, this is important because the reason why we have a tent is to protect the gas from rain. And for it to protect the gas from rain, it has to be waterproof. Test C. Does light pass through the material? Actually, uh, again, the reason why we have a tent is to protect the guest from uh, very strong sunlight. All right, imagine uh, in the hot afternoon sun, and if the canopy allows light to pass through, then uh, you know the people under the tent would be uh, subjected to the hot afternoon sun, and that's uh, not the reason why we have the party tent. We would like to shield the gas, protect the gas from the strong sunlight. So test C is important. Test D is the material smooth or rough to the touch. Now normally the canopy is right on top. Whether it's uh, smooth or whether it's rough, uh, nobody's going to touch it uh, after it has been set up. Okay. So uh, knowing all this, then uh, you know make your choice uh, one two three or four which one do you think which of the two which of the tests uh, do you think it is important all right so uh, if again like i say another reminder if you don't understand uh, do look at uh, uh, these reminders this set of reminders and so that you can do the necessary thank you